For many musicians, Bitwig Studio is the best DAW out there. Why? Because it's fast, creative and incredibly flexible. And for me, it's the perfect tool to bring musical ideas to life. If you're new to music production or switching from another DAW, this series will get you started quickly and professionally. My name is Thomas Foster, I'm a music producer and in this video I'll give you a fast and easy introduction to the latest version of Bitwig Studio. Great to have you here, let's go! Welcome to Thomas Foster Music Production. Before we dive in, I created a playlist with all my Bitwig Studio videos, a complete free course where you learn everything you need to make great music in Bitwig. You'll find the link in the description. If you open Bitwig Studio for the first time, it should look like this. If it doesn't, let's go to the settings here. It's this button here on the top. And here we go to settings and the user interface. You can change the language here. I'm now on English, which is good for this English tutorial. And you can uh, choose another display profile. If you want to have exactly the same like me, go to single display large. All right. Let me give you a quick overview. Here on the top, we have the very important buttons like play and stop like the tempo, like the metronome and many things more. Here on the lower corner here, this little eye, we can open the information box. At the moment we don't need it, so let's close it. Uh, let's close it. Also here on the right side we can open some boxes with these buttons here, but also we don't need this for the moment, so let's close it. So now we see just the two tracks we already have. An instrument track where we can record MIDI, means notes. And an audio track where we could record our microphone or play some audio from turntables or from CD or wherever or from a library or whatever. Okay, let's start with the MIDI track. We want to have fun now and record some drums on this MIDI track. But for this, the first thing we need is the right tempo. So what is a tempo? We have here the tempo displayed in beats per minute. That means if we um, listen to this, let's listen to, to 110 beats per minute. Uh, I place the cursor in this display. Uh, I just click here to the beginning and here to the play button. And if the metronome is active here, you should hear now the click in 110 beats per minute. If you would count now the clicks for exactly one minute, you should count exactly 110 beats. That's why it's 110 beats per minute. We are in a 4 to 4 uh, bar. That's the most time in, in electronic music. We have this. Why don't we make a little bit something a little bit faster, like a dance track? Maybe we go up to 125. Uh, that's like house music or any kind of... Po uh, dancing music is around 125. That's wonderful. Let's load some drums. So I'm be sure that I uh, select our instrument track called Inst1. And here we see this plus icon here. That's exactly where we click now to load an instrument, to load a sound on our first MIDI track, instrument track, right? Let's click on the plus and here we have now the browser. And in the browser uh, we should see the drum machine. If not, we have to change something here. Then click here on this yellow keyboard to see all instruments. Here you would see all the audio effects and all the note effects. But for now we just need the instruments and we load the drum machine. If you don't see the drum machine anyway, you could type in the name here. You could type drum machine and now it's the number one, right? Okay, let's double click it to load it. So now this is a place for drum samples, but at the moment it's empty. You could load your own audio just by dragging and dropping it 
it to this um, keys here or you can load a whole set of drum sounds. To do this, we click this button here uh, saying replace content. Now we open the browser anyway, but this time we are able to load, uh, to load drum machine sounds. I love the 808 drum machine. It's one of the most famous drum machines on this planet. Um, to see just the 808 drum machine, we type in 808 and we should search for legend 808 if you don't have it just load the maybe also the normal kit let's let's load the normal kit that's uh, for the first tutorial <laughs> i think this is the best one to start okay we double click this so now we see here all the name of the drum samples that are loaded to hear them we can click this little arrows here now you hear the bass drum the snare drum. To hear it a little louder, we can make the track a little bit louder. Maybe we keep lower than zero. Let's go to minus two or something like this. Here's a snare drum. Here's a hi-hat. And so on. We also, if you are in record mode and you have a MIDI keyboard connected, you could play the sounds now on your keyboard. Like me, I'm playing now the C1, the D1. The uh, F sharp, the clap is on the F. And we also could record this by clicking here the record button. And now we could play it live on the keyboard, right? And now we could listen to it. But maybe you don't have a keyboard connected. That's why I show you a different way. So as this clip here is selected, I click on the backspace key uh, to erase it. To make an empty clip, we make a double click here. And to hear just this one bar, we take care that the clip is selected. And now we say Command or Control L. So now this should be a loop. What does it mean a loop? Let's click the play button and now this one bar is on loop. If it's not looped, what you see here, right, then it's running in the timeline from left to right, never ending. But we go back to zero by clicking again the stop button and click here on the loop and take care that the loop is starting at 1-1 one, one and going for one bar. You can change this by clicking here on the right corner of this loop and replacing it so that it's exactly one bar. Now we double click this clip to open the editor. This is the drum editor. To make it bigger, Click here where you get the special mouse symbol, not higher, not lower. We need exactly the symbol here in the middle. And now we can open the editor as big as we want. And the first thing we do is we place a snare drum on 1.2. You see here we have the beats. Here's the second beat at 1.2. We make a double click, not directly on the line, a little bit to the right. All right, and we do the same at 1.4. So if we listen now, what we can do with this play button here or with the space key of our keyboard. Let's click the space key of our keyboard. Uh, and click it again to stop Bitwig, yeah? That's very easy to remember. Just use the space key for play and stop and play and stop. All right. But uh, now we hear the snare on two at four. Let's place a bass drum at 1.1, 1 .1, as it means at the first beginning. Uh, and it's important the snare drum is on the second key. It's this one here, so don't place it here or here. Please place it here. And the bass drum here on the first key for the kick, and we also place it here. So let's listen to this by clicking the space key or with the mouse, the play button. So 
Um, if we don't want to hear the click anymore, because we anyway don't play it on our keyboard, so we don't need a metronome, let's click here to stop the metronome. Why don't we add a hi-hat? To find a hi-hat, let's listen to the sounds here. We already have the name hi-hat. Let's listen. That's good. Let's click here. And now there are different ways to get our hi-hat. Here we see the grid. It's 116. That means that we have 16 notes per bar. That's nice. So let's make one note here in the really beginning. And with a command or control D, 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 we can duplicate it uh, to make the hi-hat like this. Uh, there's also a possibility to make it in eight notes. So let's make command or control Z to go back. You can always go back one step by clicking to say to, by saying undo, right? And that's uh, you do this with command Z. And now we go here to the right corner of the note and make it double as long. So now we have eighth notes. And now we can duplicate it again. We also could copy it by holding down the Option key. Sometimes it's also the Alt key, but most of the time it's the Option key. But the fastest way is to use the Duplicate feature. You hear? That's a little bit different. Maybe we want to add 116 notes by making this note here shorter and clicking Command D like Duplicate. That's wonderful. Let's make undo by saying command set. Um, and why don't we select this note here and making the last note here with this double effect. And why don't we change the bass drum? We can do this also with the arrow keys of our keyboard. So instead of using the mouse like this, we could use the arrow keys like this. Let's duplicate it. And again, arrow key to the right to place another one here. I like that. Uh, why don't we add a little clap here? Um, let's see where the... Here's the clap. Isn't it wonderful? And we could add another sound. What's about a shaker in 16th in addition to the hi-hat in 8th notes? How cool is that? You see how easy it is to have a little fun. And if it sounds like this at your site, at your computer, I have to say congratulations. You programmed your furry be, uh, very first beat right now. In the next tutorial, I show you how to use the audio tracks. Artificial intelligence has radically changed my workflow as a music producer in the past few months. I use AI to assist with composing, songwriting, arranging, sound design, vocal generation, choir creation, mixing and mastering. If you want to stay ahead as a music producer in the coming years, you can't ignore this trend. My book, Artificial Intelligence in Music and Audio Production, Shaping the Sound of Tomorrow, gives you a clear and compact overview of all the AI tools that can take your production to the next level. My name is Thomas Foster. Thank you for watching. Always stay creative and get the book now on Amazon and everywhere books are sold. Cheers! Welcome to Thomas Foster Music Production.